Clark, if you would please call the roll. Mayor. Here. Mr. Philip Powell. Here. Ms. Ibbotson. Here. Sorry. Uh, Ms. Stewart. Here. Mr. Cordell. Here. Ms. Bridges. Uh, Ms. Selmore. Here. Mr. Biles. Here. Mr. Jones. Here. Mr. Hatton. Here. Mr. Florence. Here. Mr. Butler. Present. We have a quorum. Thank you. All right, packets were made available Thursday. Pick up on Friday. Has everybody had an opportunity to review all the, many, the meeting minutes? So I'll take a motion to approve January 13th's regular meeting minutes. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor I'll make a motion to approve, to approve the January 13th minutes. Second. Motion is made and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? I'll take a motion to approve January 16th condemnation information session minutes. Motion so moved. Thank you. Second. Motion is made and seconded. Any discussion? Just to request that in the future con condemnation meetings, we could list the subject properties in the minutes for sake of record. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Anything else? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. And lastly, I'll take a motion to accept the January 27th special meeting minutes. Motion is made. Second. Motion is made and second. Any discussion on those? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? All right. <clears throat> We've got a first on the agenda is our public comment. That's going to be Ms. Elizabeth Anderson to give us a description, a presentation on the Carver Business Career Center. So welcome. Thank you. Industrial, industrial technology classes. Um, all these classes 
are, and also agriculture and aquaculture classes. These classes are going to be geared toward training ch our children on jobs that they can use here in state in Lone Oak, and that's the initiative of the Business Academy. We also have attached to the Carver Business Academy will be a health clinic, which right now there's a health clinic at the primary school that houses a doctor and two residents, and that's a partnership with Baptist Health, and we're hoping to grow that partnership and have more doctors here, more residents <coughs> rotating through, through a partnership with Baptist and UAMS. They're gonna provide two doctors along with up to five residents. And how great will that be for our students? We have almost 70% free and reduced students that are on free and reduced lunch plans at our school district. If they can't afford to pay for lunch, do you think they afford to go to the doctor? But this is a, a service that's gonna be provided to our students for free. They're gonna be able to see doctors, nurses, um, and we're in hopes to even provide dental services for these kids. And this will all be part of that health clinic that'll be part of the Business Academy. Um, this health clinic will also be open to the community. And we all know what how scary it can be to not have a doctor in town and how economic development will be based off of not having um, a doctor in town. So I think it's gonna be a great opportunity for our town to have more doctors, more nurses, more chances for our kids to um, have economic development. It'll, um, it'll be a great opportunity for our kids to take. There's, um, the courses will be offered will be offered by ASU BB, a partnership with them, and ASU will offer like out college algebra courses for kids who do want to go to college but maybe just need to test the waters and see if they can. So there's going to be a lecture hall that will offer some beginning college courses, and then there'll be all these hands-on um, courses. I passed out um, a little trifle that, um, that gives some information about our millage. <coughs> There's also on the back, it talks about how much it's gonna cost. And the average tax person will not, even, it won't for a cup of coffee a week, it won't cost you to, to help us build this business academy. And I just think it's gonna <coughs> provide so much economic, economic <coughs> development and growth for the future of Lone Oak and provide a workforce that'll stay here and, and raise their families here. So um, we have several slides. Okay. So these are just some quotes on, um, on how college is becoming um, less of an option in trade schools. And if you, if you listen to the news, it's all about trade school and sending kids to trade school. I mean, last time you called for a plumber, how much did it cost you? Well, mine rang the doorbell and it was $100 just to show up. It didn't, it didn't, and he came from North Little Rock. So, you know, we, our town is desperate for some hands-on help around here. Um, let's see. Um, anyway, so here's a um, talk about um, the college versus the enrollment. Um, the tuition that ASU BB is going to offer our students is $50 an hour. Where if you go to Fayetteville, it's almost $250 an hour. And those are for the college courses that are going to be offered. It's just a great opportunity for kids in our school district to be able to get their feet wet and, and, and realize if college is truly them for them versus um, actually going to college and getting in a whole bunch of debt. So um, skip ahead to the... Um, <clears throat> this is the one that's being built in Saline County right now. They're um, building a um, what is it called, Dr. Tech? It's a it's, it's not a career a, career technical center. Career technical center, and both Benton and Bryant school districts will filter into this. Um, it'll be right on Interstate 30, so um, it's something that we're going to need to to be able to compete with other school districts. Uh, school choice becomes a real thing in May. So come May, anybody that goes to Lone Oak schools can apply to go to another school, or other schools can apply to come to Lone Oak schools. And without even moving, you can go to any school district of your choice. So I think we, by making our school district more um, marketable and offering more courses, um, trying to get to the, oh, here's the picture. Um, 
trying to offer more courses will, will make us more valuable. So this is what the Business Academy will look like. Um, if you know where the post office is in Lone Oak, it will be built on nine acres that was donated by the Wardalak family um, on, on Highway 70 right there next to the post office. So it'll have great frontage. And I tease that every time the interstate has a wreck, everybody's going to drive past the Business Academy and they're going to Google it because that's what I do when I'm a passenger in my husband's car and we're off on a random road, I start Googling, well, what does this town offer? And um, and so this business account is gonna be a beautiful building. It's gonna, um, here's the, um, I guess the layout of the building. You can see the lecture hall. Um, and this over here is the big medical clinic. On one side will house the students and staff of the school and the other side will be open to the public and the kids will be able to shadow nurses and doctors so if they're interested in going to nursing school before they even graduate high school they can shadow a nurse and see what that's about and learn about it and have that hands-on training so um, and here's the um, oversight as you can see that on the left side is the post office so that's where um, the proposed building will be built and um, I really appreciate everybody's support and um, to get this knowledge passed. Do you want to add anything? Well, I'll just say, I think you did a great job. <laughs> I'll, I'll just say that, um, yeah, she did. I'm a school official, but more importantly, I'm a community member here. And this really gives us in this town an unprecedented opportunity to grow our economy by building a workforce. And that's what it's all about. More businesses and residents will come here when we have more, um, uh, more uh, workers skilled workers, which is what we need here. Uh, there's a lot of jobs to be had in this area. And um, kids may want to go to college, and we want them to, but why not have some skills as well? And um, uh, we have a, probably 30 different businesses with whom we have partnerships. And they're all saying the same thing. We need skilled workers, and we pay a lot of money. And so why don't our kids get the opportunity? We have a captive audience at the school over there. This is a great opportunity for us to build Lone Oak. Really appreciate the opportunity to speak to the council. Appreciate the mayor. Elizabeth's done a great job. We probably have 20 plus people involved in this campaign. So we just appreciate your support. It's a real opportunity for us. Yeah. And I do want to say one more thing that, you know, I have two boys that are in the school district and they're nine and 11. And I have every hope that they go to college, <coughs> but my hope is too, they go to college knowing how to fi fix a diesel engine. So that if they come back to our community one day, college educated, they know how to work on a tractor and they know how to work on diesel uh, machine or 18 wheelers so that it can enrich their business and um, they can grow that too. So I think it's just as important for kids who wanna go to college versus kids who don't. So anyway, thank you so much for giving thank us you. the time. I really appreciate it. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Are there, any, are there any questions from the council while we have Dr. Tackett and Ms. Elizabeth? You know, here? I would like to say that we have had several doctors graduate from Lone Oak High School, and all of them have moved off. Had they been a part of a program like this, they may have stayed in Lone Oak and made Lone Oak their home. But um, with my age children, we have a lot of doctors. I know Dr. Tackett has a doctor, has a son, and I just think had they been a part of this and exposed to it in high school, we may not have the problem of looking for a doctor in town. But I think our hopes are to keep them here and interested and maybe give back to the school and be a part of this program. So I think it's so very important that we all talk to our friends and our neighbors uh, to get out and vote because early voting starts February 17th. Okay, so you know if they can't come on the election day, please tell them to come early and vote. Avoid the crowd. Remind them, keep plugging it in on Facebook. Talk to your church members, your neighbors, your friends, and share this because they have plenty of opportunities to go and vote. And, you know, like Dr. Tackett said, if we don't do this, if we don't do this and vote for it, someone else will. So please encourage everyone you know to get out and vote. It is so important for the life of our school. Yeah, thank you, Suzette. Early voting is February the 18th. 
we know where that is? The community center. Community. Well, no community center. February the 18th, March the 2nd, and official votes March the 3rd. So, if it's uh, okay with the council, there's no objection. We actually have a resolution. That's why I asked these guys to uh, present tonight because I was going to ask city council to pass a resolution <coughs> in support of the millage. Unless there's any objection, I'll go ahead and take a motion to entertain resolution 2-1-2020. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Resolution 2-1-2020, a resolution of support endorsing the proposed 1.9 mil increase necessary for the funding of the Lone Oak Public School District's Carver Business Academy, whereas officials of the, Lone Oak, of the City of Lone Oak consider access to higher education to be of utmost importance to the city's future economic and community development. And whereas the Lone Oak School District has proposed a 1.9 mil increase to be voted on by the people of Lone Oak supporting the construction of the Carver Business Academy. And whereas the Carver Business Academy will offer certifications in diesel mechanics, aquaculture, agriculture, industrial technology, and healthcare services. And whereas these courses will be offered through a partnership with and through support from ASUBD and the Arkansas Department of Education. And whereas officials from the city of Lone Oak feel that it is in the best interest of the city's citizens of Lone Oak to endorse said project. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Lone Oak City Council hereby endorses the proposed 1.9 mil increase necessary for the funding of the Carver Business Academy. Motion to accept the resolution. Second. Motion is made and second. Any further discussion? All right. We'll take it to a vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? Resolution carries. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Taggett. Oh, Dr. Taggett. All right, next on the agenda, uh, we have Ms. Anna McClung with our Lone Oak 2022 update. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, first of all, I'll just uh, point out that <coughs> I dropped off to you a, a personalized card. It's not a Valentine from us, but <laughs> okay, so, uh, it's an invitation to attend the March 15th closing um, uh, ceremony for the Presbyterian Church here in town, which is a historical uh, landmark, of course, in their city, and that will be their last service, and so you and each are invited to, to attend that. So to turn to the Lone Oak 2022 report, um, we have this same lovely group of people here um, with us on January 23rd, where they gave us an update about the uh, Carver Center Business Academy. And we had about 30 people in attendance to that, so we had some um, good discussion, and uh, Dr. Tuckett and Ms. Anderson were there to answer questions that we had. We also had a, a short update from Ms. Valerie Turner, uh, who presented a video about the importance of our citizens um, participating in the 2020 census in a program called Be Counted. Uh, also, this um, on February 4th, uh, we had our first leadership luncheon here in town, and this was um, a presentation by Pastor Rod Loy, who has written the book, Help, I'm in Charge, and uh, that was a well-attended uh, luncheon with about 50 people there, and the next luncheon is going to be on Tuesday, February 18th, and it's going to be at the Lone Oak First Assembly Church, and the speaker is going to be Ms. Kendra Pruitt who's the senior advisor to the Little Rock Mayor's Office. And so if you're interested in attending, um, you can go to the website, lunchinlonope.com, and uh, get your tickets before the 14th of this month. So uh, we have the Downtown Support Committee uh, has been making progress and trying to go forward to get us to be part of the Main Street Arkansas program. And they have um, sent out letters to uh, the board of directors that used to be part of the Main Street Lone Oak program and looking to see if they want to continue to be part of that or and also help to identify new members with the goal of trying to um, <coughs> have this board start uh, performing in, under the same nonprofit banner as the original organization. And so the goal is uh, to have this Main Street Lone Oak program accepted by the state and once that occurs, then uh, the board will be exploring opportunities for getting uh, funding for economic development in the town. Their next meeting is going to be tomorrow at 
uh, February 11th at noon at the museum. And they'll be looking for people to continue to help them with the Main Street Arkansas program. Uh, the beautification team, we met on January 27th and we discussed our goals for 2020. And so we're going to continue this year with the Yard of the Month Club, uh, excuse me, Yard of the Month program. And we're going to start it in May and run it through mm -hmm. October. And then we're going to expand that to have a, a December Yard of the Month, which will you know, be looking at the uh, holiday decor that people put out in their uh, yards. We're also going to have what's called Business of the Month program. And this will be to award local business having the most attractive storefront. And that will also go through the same uh, May through October uh, period. Our next meeting is going to be at 530 at the museum on the 24th. And we certainly welcome others to join us. On our infrastructure team, we have a new co-lead. Uh, it's Mr. Gid Richardson. He's going to be joining uh, Walls McCrary in leading this program. Uh, Gid is a Lone Oak resident that works with the Arkansas National Guard. And our other teams will be making announcements about other upcoming meetings um, in the near future. Ben, thank you. Good job, Ben. All right, we'll get right into it. Mr. Bill Blankenship's first on the list. Community development. Good evening, I'm Bill Wagenship, I'm the Director of Community and Development. How are y'all doing tonight? Good, thank you. I was just jumping right in, I just let you know. Now, if you look at these dates, if you look at this, I messed up all the dates, I'm looking into the future. Um, but, uh, I attended the plumbing and HVAC inspector training classes, and I'm currently licensed in both. Um, I was also accepted by the Arkansas Board of Electric, Electrical Examiners to become an electrical inspector, and will be tuned, uh, I'll be attending those classes as soon as they come up with the schedule. They haven't put the schedule out yet. Um, I attended the city council meeting on January the 6th, um, condemnation meeting on January the 16th, Planning and zoning meeting on January the 20th and the budget meeting on January the 27th. Um, at the condemnation meeting, we asked for approval to deem pro properties and structures unsafe. Um, to the ones that did show up, thought that was a pretty good idea. I have uh, met with our attorney since then. Um, what we've come up with, and if you'd like, I've got copies up here if you want to see the letter. I don't know if y'all want to see them or not. But we did come up with a letter that will go out to them, uh, deeming the property is unsafe. And all that does is, uh, to deem it unsafe, we don't need to go before the city council. Um, we can go ahead and deem it unsafe. What that does is it gives them 30 days to respond back to city hall and, and notify us of their intentions and what they plan to do with the property. Um, it also gives them the opportunity to pull a permit. If they do pull a permit, that gives them six months to get started and get ready to go to work. So that keeps us from having to just completely, you know, go straight into condemnation. Um, I think it's a great opportunity for the for the property owners. You know, they don't come to us accusing us of just condemning their properties. I mean, we are truly notifying them. Um, the end product of what I've come up or what we have come up with. I'm sorry. Um, and this notice will be placed on their on the structure to be deemed unsafe and be future condemned if they choose not to do anything about it. Um, this will be posted onto their dwelling. Um, they'll be able to reach in here. My card is there. They can take that card out. The letter, of course, will be sent out. It'll be sent out self snail mail, and it'll also be sent <coughs> regular mail. Um, so they're getting plenty of opportunities to get in touch with us at this point. Um, when they do get this card and they do contact City Hall, I'll have a packet form that explains to them the city's rights, what the city plans to do, explains to them their rights and their right to come up to appeal to y'all. Um, it's gonna be a complete packet. Um, and plus, uh, it gives us opportunity to sit down and discuss it. Um, so I'm, I'm just gonna go with that, leave that alone. Um, right now, I'm current, uh, there's several of us here within the city. We're currently working on the IWORKS program, uh, which is going to help us with the inspection processes and stuff like that to be able to do it online. Um, I 
think I explained that the last time. And I'm currently working to become a floodplain manager with the city. <coughs> um, we currently have one. We have a floodplain. And the only thing really required by the state, I think, is to be a flood to have a floodplain administrator. I think it'd be a benefit to have a floodplain manage manager in place. Um, because of the way, you know, because we don't have one, I'm currently going to pay for that training. And if I pass it, <coughs> it's reimbursed. If I don't, then I doubt anything. Um, it is a really tough course. Um, but I don't. I really don't have any. Don't think that I'll fail. And we're not going to set Bill up for failure. He's going to be working with Leanne Poole at Central Arkansas Planning and Development District. She's currently, I think, the nearest floodplain manager. Mm -hmm. And she's been uh, certified for quite a long time. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank so you. I'll be training with her. Bill? Would you uh, refresh my memory? And I know several on that condemnation meeting we didn't didn't attend, or um, some of us didn't make it. But this, as far as deeming something unsafe, this isn't something <coughs> we just came up with. I mean, kind of the idea of reinstating it, but that was in the in the laws and the books already. Right. Yes, it's already. It's just something uh, we haven't been doing necessarily. Four thirty one uh, states in it as deeming a property as a nuisance or as unsafe. Right. Um, as a nuisance. Believe it or not, because there's a big difference there. As a nuisance, I do believe it has to be come before city council, but to deem it unsafe, it does not. It just has to be somebody appointed by the mayor. <laughs> has to come to me or to Jim. Um, either one of us can do it as city inspectors. Um, and like I say, this just affords, it gives us time to work on it. It gives us time to talk to the, to the property owner. Um, it gives them an opportunity. You know, instead of just going in feet first and slam them to the wall, I mean, that's, it's just another process, you know, and trying to make it look, you know, trying to be nice about it. Yeah. Thank you, Bill. Appreciate it, man. Thank you. All right, next up is Mr. Uh, Chief Wittenberg from the fire department. Second, any discussion on it? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? I was curious, thank you. Next thing I got is a standby generator for the fire department. Uh, it's purchased through source well, so it's uh, the only bid we got on the third page is this price. There's a 10 week lead time on it, so I'm going to start tomorrow getting kids on installing it. Just for the generator itself. It's uh, $20,705. It's a budgeted item. It is. Make a motion that we uh, purchase the generator for twenty, roughly $21,000. $20,705. Motion is made. Do I have a second? Second. Motion is made. Second. Any discussion on the purchase? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. All right, the next thing I have is more Robinson. It's a uh, tire, two tire, two tire, two. 
Uh, you look at higher, sorry. Yes, sir. Uh, one of them actually got punctured on the interstate right after I pulled this quote the day after it. So I went ahead and put two front tires on one of them. So one quote's for the rest of them, and then one quote's for the other truck that needs all new tires. So it's 6, it is. The total one's right there. 6,137. We need good tires on there. I'll make a motion. We buy them. Second. Motion is made and seconded. Any discussion on the purchase of the uh, fire truck tires? Yeah, Chief, is there, was there an opportunity to buy these tires locally? This is off the state contract. So they're cheaper. But yes, there are. Okay. It wouldn't save us any money, though. No. Any other questions? <coughs> All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Anything else? That's all I got. Appreciate it. All right, Mr. Roy Don Lewis with the Parks and Recs Department. Welcome back. Thank you. I don't have a lot today. Uh, a couple things. The concession stand out there at the ballpark, they have it in the dry <coughs> now. Uh, got all the block of roast on and stuff and metal. They, they can do it in the dry. Got plywood down and got. The rubber on top of it. If you haven't seen it, uh, the mayor had to take a couple of pictures of it on Facebook. It looks really nice. Um, the other thing I've got is the concession stand y'all voted, uh, the Corpus concession stand y'all voted to let, let us buy last week, a week before last. Oh, the trailer. The trailer. We did not buy it. The guy did not have a, uh, when we got up there to get it, he didn't have the title to it. He had everything else, but he didn't have the top. But we can't buy it. Uh, so we're still looking for something, for something like that. So if you happen to see anything, give me a holler. We'll go with it. Uh, Meredith, do you want me to bring up about the glass up front, or you want to do that? Let's we'll see. No, you can. Uh, yeah, we talked about this. Thought uh, you were going to bring uh, it up. Been working on the office. <clears throat> put that door right here front in the mayor's office here. Uh, we're going to put glass down the bar. On both sides and sliding windows on both sides of the, of the door when you come in. Oh. <coughs> it stands on across the bar. Uh, we called four different places. We have one come give us a bid so far. The other one's been a month. The American attest to that. They came out and looked and everything, and the other one just never did show up. I did put out a phone call today to another place over here, Staley's and Cabot, to give us a bid. We have received one bid, and it come up. Uh, Five thousand six hundred eighty dollars. Uh, now that's putting some sliding windows on both side, along each side, where uh, Bill is going to be sitting, or where Janie's sitting. <coughs> just the glass from wall, all the way back around uh, to the door, and then back over to the other wall. Uh, and it's going to be protected to that glass. It's going to be like a windshield. You know, it won't shatter. So it's. Uh, I, what I would like to have permission to spend that uh, up to that amount and try to get at least one more. Quote. We've been trying to get more quotes. And to be clear, that's not like a security glass. It's tempered, but it would be a set of glass pane, pane right. like they'd put in a bank. It would have a uh, like a protective film Fan on mold. it. It would prevent shattering yeah. if somebody brought a brick. Now that's not coming water. out of my budget. It's coming out of the mayor's office. But uh, we're trying to from a glass company or a contractor. This is a glass company. Is uh, this one here? Is that? This one is going to give us this one. We're still waiting on the sale. We called the last doctor and then uh, one other one. He, he called the guy over in England. Yeah, uh, Tracy's uh, glass in England. Yeah, yeah he, I mean, <coughs> thus far, everything I've ever had him bid has been well, we can go, right we can come, I'll get that information. If you yeah, don't mind. Do you have his number? I do. Okay. I have his information. You'll leave it with okay, Regina. Okay. And tomorrow I'll get in touch with him and then and try to get a quote from him. But I just would like to have the. If we don't, if it's not no cheaper with these other ones, at least we can have, go ahead and get started as soon as we get the bid on these others. And these other two. I, I, I don't <coughs> mind making a, uh, to recommending that, but but I would like to see at least two other bids. Well, no, we're going, we're going I to like for you to get two other bids. I mean, we can go up to the 5,500, but let's get make sure we got two other bids. Actually, the 56 agents. Okay, 56 agents. 56 agents. But uh, yeah, we're, we're going to try to get three bids, at least three bids. We like I said, we done made four. We called four different guests. Oh, I understand it's now. hard to get people out, but <laughs> Tracy, he, they would they'll, they'll come and give you. Staley's is supposed to give us a quote to like, come out tomorrow and then give us a quote, and so I'll I'll call this other one. Other make that, a motion that we spend up to fifty six eighty 
to get the protective glass around the office. Second. Okay, motion has been made and seconded to spend up to the current estimate of $5,680 with two more estimates that are going to be coming in. That gives you the flexibility to get those estimates and then go ahead and make the purchase. Any discussion on that? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Thanks. All right, Mr. Jim Kelly with Public Works. Most of this weather, uh, I got a lengthy list of street patches that need to be done, uh, potholes that we need to take care of. Um, right now, if we go too heavy on patching, they just get blown out from the vehicle traffic. Uh, but as soon as we get in decent weather, we're going to start hitting those hard. Uh, drainage issues, there's tons of drainage issues we now identifying pinch points, restrictions. Uh, logging those coming up with plans to uh, correct those issues. Uh, we got three projects. Uh, we're going to start probably this week, and then we're just going to keep rolling through them and hitting those hard too as well. I uh, got a new level coming, uh, so we can start shooting right on all these ditches and properties to see to get maximum flow from our ditches, and so that should be beneficial. We've been doing it kind of a for a old-fashioned way, I think, before, and I'd like to do <coughs> a little bit different. The sidewalk project, about 50% complete with Lincoln and College done. <coughs> we have noted some corrections that need to be made on those sidewalks, but it's going to be at the contractor's responsibility to make those corrections, but we are noting any issues that, that we've seen. One item that requires action tonight is a 2000, 2020 Dodge Ram. It's just a regular cab, short wheelbase pickup truck. And this is a set contract. This will be a water vehicle. And it's a price of $22,454. You budgeted item? It is. I also budgeted a bed for it. So next council meeting, I'll have the price for putting a service bed on that vehicle. <coughs> Most of we buy a new water truck for 22454 Motion is made and seconded. Is there any discussion on the purchase? All in favor, say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Also on your table, I included a map of the proposed phase two water. Uh, clear up any, uh, hey Jim, real quick, let me clear that up. There's a purchase for a work truck and a utility bed for the work the truck. Right? Just the truck right now. Okay, I didn't hear you say that you want to defer. You want to defer the utility truck uh, yes, or the utility meeting. bed for the yes. work truck? Okay. Okay. Next council meeting, I'll have to set up to and that was the truck. Okay, so for the truck, yeah, that didn't include the bed. Okay. You got what you need. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Included the map. <coughs> uh, blue would be phase one, which is <coughs> construction. Green would be phase two. Uh, just to give you an idea of the uh, areas that are going to be affected. Completes phase one, just run it. What percent is complete phase one? Phase one? I'd say 
say we're maybe near 50%. Yeah. Even some of the areas where the new line is laid, they have to be revisited for service tabs. So pressure out new lines, it's a considerable job. Sure. So is this something you're going to post like on the city website where the public will know? I think that would be really nice to inform the public. The sidewalks are looking very nice. Very nice. I've heard a lot of compliments on those. My, kid, my kids tested them on Saturday. So. <laughs> Have you? <laughs> okay. I've been looking at them too hard, so I keep finding flaws. And, and stuff. <laughs> but we'll get anything I find straightened out for sure. Other than that, that's, uh, that's pretty much it. If there's anything that you see in the report that <coughs> you do not see uh, that you'd like added or any additional information, just reach out and let me know because I'm not sure what y'all are looking for exactly, but I don't mind providing any information that you, that you want. Thanks, Jim. Good job. I'm going to back up real quick, Mr. Mike Brown. I skipped you earlier. I'm sorry. I don't know if you realize it or not, but you're on deck. That's okay. Okay, We wouldn't forget you. Uh, of January at the community center. Uh, that's our that's our Christmas. Uh, where everybody wants to make resolutions and get to uh, We had a 43.1% increase. Now it's, I got them out there, so it's my job to retain them. So we're, we're, we're trying everything we can do to retain them. Uh, we, I think we're, we're trying to get some dance class going on. We're trying to get uh, a karate class back. Uh, so we're just trying to do a lot of things to, to uh, keep a uh, member engaged. Uh, I'm not asking for anything tonight, but uh, the main thing I wanted to talk about, uh, I, I'm trying to do a program. Uh, my wife has, has been cleaning the house. Uh, and, you know, we're a real big sports family. She got to throwing gloves and balls and I'm like, no, you can't do this. <laughs> but I got to thinking about it, uh, how I kept my kids out of trouble. You just get, give them a ball, give them a glove, and you don't see kids just outside playing anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, so I uh, proposed this program. It's a sports, sports exchange uh, we're going to have on the 29th of uh, February, and uh, where the whole community you want to donate gloves, balls, uh, if you want the tennis court to be used, uh, donate old tennis rackets, uh, cleats, uh, ping pong paddles, ping pong tables, uh, golf clubs, helmets, pads, uh, just anything that we could give to these kids. And I think you'll see Roy Dunn's participation go up in baseball. Uh, I know you'll see soccer participation uh, going up, our, our basketball participation. So uh, I'm asking that everybody get behind this and uh, look in your closets, uh, look, in, uh, you know, look upstairs and, uh, and bring out any old sports equipment that you got. We'll take it and uh, uh, I've got a staff look well, you know, if it needs uh, some lacing, I'll buy the lacing and we'll relace. We just want to get the kids, uh, get something to the kids. A lot, believe it or not, uh, you may have some kid out there that wants to play baseball but can't because they don't have a glove. Uh, so if we do this, I think uh, we'll see our participation uh, in sports uh, go up. Uh, so. That's pretty much all I have. Mike, can you give me the dates again on that? Uh, February the 29th. Mm -hmm. At the community center. Mm -hmm. You want fishing stuff too? Fishing. 
something that okay. uh, you know to to, to 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 get the youth get them off those phones and out of the house. Uh, and I also thought uh, she's going through the closets, and I think my daughters have been in all kind of pageants, and I'm not, I know I've got one dress that I paid. $750 for it. <laughs> <laughs> just sitting in my closet. You know, uh, and Put that thing on, Mike. We're in around town. <laughs> it's, it's a little too small. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, and if I'm, I'm planning on having something like that for community get together, bring old prom dresses, suits, or whatever uh, to the kids that, uh, you know, I've got some nice ones, nice dresses. So, That's all I've got, man. Thank you very much. Appreciate you, Mike. Yeah. All right, Chief Edwards. <clears throat> Police Department. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. All I have to say is uh, the report from uh, January 2020. Uh, of course, the numbers in front of you. Uh, complaint and dispatch calls were 237. I've noted uh, that that was 145 less than December. Uh, 911 calls <clears throat> were 215, uh, 42 less than December. Um, of course, there's some more numbers there, but I wanted to note that uh, there was 27 felony arrests, 14 more than December. Um, I'm accrediting that to my patrolman uh, making uh, narcotics uh, arrests while on traffic stops. Uh, there's not that many uh, new other violent <coughs> felonies in, in that, but most of them were uh, felony uh, drugs, drug arrests. Uh, my effort uh, between, or I'm sorry, the combined amount between the build immigration and probation parole is 10,980. Tickets written, of course, if you would look on to the second page in the different wards broke, uh, broken up, uh, there are 16 citations, there's eight more in then December. Uh, total reports were 103 uh, for the month, 14 more than December. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Chief, I do want to ask if uh, on the next report if you would like to see the uh, plus or minus on those complaints on the actual form instead of me just bringing it to you uh, verbally. You know, you get so much bad <coughs> sometimes and so many complaints. Well, I had a niece that had, had warrants on her, and she got pulled over, and she went to jail. And she gave the Lono Police Department the utmost compliment. She said they treated me so nice. So I think that's a form of leadership showing, and I hope they continue on. Thank you, sir. Job. Thanks, Chief. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> Legend of Finance, Mr. Phil Powell. So the floor is yours. So two things. Uh, first of all, you'll recall we talked about bidding out the uh, the construction loan for the uh, concession stand that Roy Don mentioned earlier. <clears throat> uh, we did bid that out. We got four responses for the four hundred fifty thousand dollars <coughs> sixty month loan. Uh, the two, uh, the low bid was from our best bank, uh, 3.11. Uh, the second lowest bid was First State Bank at 3.149, about four basis points higher. The difference being, uh, in reality, the First State Bank bid is better. There's uh, very little cost associated with that loan. The our best bank has an origination fee, an appraisal fee, title insurance, because they actually would take a lien on the building. Uh, and if you search that, the minimum cost of that would be a couple thousand dollars, and we would never recoup a couple thousand dollars over the life of that loan for the whole four hundred fifty thousand dollars stayed out for the whole period. So we're talking about one hundred seventy-five dollars a year, so that won't happen. We anticipate paying that off in less than five years. So my recommendation is to accept the bid from First State Bank for four hundred fifty thousand dollars at three point one four nine percent. I'll entertain a motion. Yes, sir. I'll make the motion. Motion is made. Second. Motion is made and seconded. Any discussion on it? 
All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? I'm a stockholder of that bank. I didn't, I didn't confer with Mike. <laughs> the other thing we have, uh, you'll see in your packet a copy of the 2018 uh, audit of the city done by the Legislative Joint Audit Auditing Committee with the state. Um, it takes them a while to do this, so we're just uh, we're just now getting 2018s. They'll soon start on the 2019. This week they'll start on the 2019 uh, audit, and they'll be here for quite some time. They always are. Uh, you can read through this, and, and there's a lot of a lot a lot here. Uh, basically, it's an excellent audit. Uh, no uh, discrepancies. No. My, uh, major uh, deviations. Uh, we always get a, a comment about uh, our accounting system and the, uh, the, the state is working on a new accounting system. They're already asking us to comply to it, but they haven't even put the rules out yet. So they write it up like it's already out. And that, that's all that's in this report. It's, it's excellent. I give, give credit to our, our administrative staff. They do an excellent job. Do you need a motion to approve that report? Make a motion that we approve the financial 2018 <laughs> audit. 2018 audit. Second. Motion is made and second. Any discussion on the acceptance? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? That motion carries. All right, we're gonna move right on. We're almost at an hour right now, so I'm gonna be as quick as I can. I've got uh, about three points of new business. There is no old business. Uh, and the first, we got a uh, request to release an RP for website design services. Unless there's any objection from the city council, I've kind of undershot this request. We've got money bid or money uh, budgeted into in this year's budget, okay? Uh, to redesign the website, but this is really more of a branding campaign, not just a, a website is just one piece of that. I had a very uh, good conversation with uh, Will Staley of Thrive this afternoon, and what I'd like to do is actually bring more information to the council in March as to where I want to go with this. That way I can have a plan, can actually have numbers put behind it, and what this is going to look like, okay? You can be looking at about five or $6,000 to renovate that website, um, but this is a uh, inclusive of a, a, a billboard campaign, uh, social media advertisements, uh, mailers. It's, it's a whole branding and marketing plan uh, to kind of pick up initially uh, where the Kickstart program started uh, and see it through fruition, okay? So you guys can expect those numbers in March. If there's any objections, we'll move past that point. All right, thank you. All right, the second point, uh, we've already got permission from the council to release an RFQ uh, for uh, entering into a partnership with energy service contractor. Um, since that point, uh, I have had many conversations with uh, Gene Eagle, Gib Richardson, Walls McCreary, uh, Philip even, uh, has been in, in these conversations. And we've spoken with the Arkansas Energy Office, and they are kind of an oversight committee to all these um, energy service performance contracts and solar projects that are going in across the state. All right. They actually have a, uh, they provide a consultation service, all right? It's 0.3% of the, of the um, project phase. And you guys printed this out for you guys, printing your packets, three tenths of a percent. Uh, and talking to Chet Howland uh, at the Arkansas Energy Office, we would be looking at approximately 10 to $11.5,000 uh, on about a million three project to get top shelf blue ribbon consultation who can walk us through the investment grade audit, consider the table, help us negotiate financing fees, interest rates, uh, and, and give us these comps all across the state so that we actually go in with an advisor who is seeing the best and the worst of these projects. And so I'm going to ask the city council tonight uh, to enter into a partnership with the Ar Arkansas Energy Office uh, and accept their cost, which will be due only if we execute uh, a contract past the investment grade audit. So moved. Thank you. Motion's made. Do I have a second? Second. Motion's made and seconded. Any further discussion on it? Do we have an estimate of what that's going to cost, did you say? 0.3% uh, of whatever the about is. The services from the energy office, mm -hmm. about $10,000. That's from Which, Chet's estimate, looking at the size and scope of what Lono could be putting up. 
Okay, so percentage wise, that would be the 3%. 0.3, yeah, 0.3, 3 tenths of a percent. Mm -hmm. okay. So about $10,000, and then you'd be looking at hopefully 50 to maybe $150,000 worth of negotiation that he might be able to save us in terms of sitting down at the table and saying, that's not look, that doesn't look right. This other town didn't get that, or can kind of hold our hand through the negotiation phase. This Help us get the best rate. This is a state agency providing? State service? agency, yeah, Arkansas Energy Office. Any other questions? If not, we'll take it to a vote then. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. We've already passed the resolution 2 1 2020. Next on the list, you'll see telecommunications and right of way management contract with local government services. If you guys remember Greg Fender, owns a company in Delonica, Georgia called Local Government Services, and he's the one who helped us uh, negotiate the contract with AT&T. This is what he does on a day-in, day-out basis. He also provides consultation services for cities throughout Georgia and uh, <coughs> Arkansas, I believe portions of Mississippi, to make sure that municipalities are receiving all of the um, franchise taxes that they are charging utility companies, all right? And these range anywhere from half a million dollars down to a few hundred dollars, all right? Um, it's recommended that cities audit their franchise um, revenue every three years or so. Um, Regina could give you testament as to how much we've probably been losing. Uh, we can't even put our thumb on it, but we haven't had an audit maybe ever. Okay. So... Uh, he charges $4,000 if we want to say, hey, Greg, would you please audit our cable company, uh, franchise, you know, or Media 3. Media 3 has been here. Uh, we don't think that they've been paying their fair share, what they're supposed to be paying. Would you please audit? It's $4,000 per audit. Or we can enter to an annual subscription for $5,000 total. At any point in time in the year, we can call in and say, hey, this is what we need. Uh, would you please check on it make sure that we're getting the full extent of what we're owed by the law? Um, and I was printing off for you guys a list to look at different cities. Now I called Cabot. Cabot's in their second year. They went with Greg last year on this. Uh, I called and talked to the lawyer there. He said Greg more than paid for his services last year. Um, but I wanted you guys just to have a range and see that uh, in, they did an audit for Columbia County and by, from Comcast alone they saved Columbia County $650,000. Go to the bottom of the list they saved Orchard Hill, I couldn't tell you where that's at, $33. But in between, there's like 200 different cities listed here. All right. So with that, I'll entertain a motion to put resolution 2-2-2020 on the floor. Mr. Mayor, I'll make a motion to put resolution 2-2-2020 on the floor. Motion's made. Motion's made and seconded. Resolution 2 2 2020, a resolution of the city of Lone Oak uh, through the alderman to authorize the mayor of said city to execute a telecommunication today. Telecommunications right of way management service agreement. Whereas the city desires to regulate the provision of telecommunication services and the use of the right of way by companies providing services to the citizens of the city. Whereas local government services LLC has available a telecommunications right of way management service to assist the city in such regulation. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the mayor of the city of Lone Oak is hereby authorized to execute a telecommunications right of way management service agreement on behalf of the city. Well, so, in their contract, which I, I'm sure is that like a renewable contract once a year, or how is that written? It is. That it is. Uh, is that automatically renewed or? No, no, no. no. I'll check. I'll, I'll, I'll verify for you. But the way I understand it, you all, you, is it that is what it says in the contract? Yeah. Okay. Section eight, part C, says it's automatically renewed for successive one-year calendar terms unless terminated by getting thirty days written notice of advance in advance of such termination. Okay. Well, forgive me for not knowing that. So it's no, automatically okay. I, I missed it with my reading as well. Um, I guess that would be my only. Pause. 
I mean, it's just we just need to calendar out first of January 2021 to start thinking about whether we want to renew and make sure we get those many, before how, what's March. The, what's the escape clause in it as far as? 30 days advance notice. Okay. So, you know, if we start thinking about it in January. Yeah, then I mean, I think it's a great, and I mean, he, he, he made up for that for what he did with us with the AT&T, so. Yeah. Yeah. He's sharp. Yeah, he's sharp. That's a good, that's a cool, that's a cool model. Okay. Is there any further discussion before we take it to a vote? Any other questions? All right. All in favor to accept resolution 2 2 2020. Say aye. 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 All opposed? All right. Motion carries. Thank you. All right. We got one more resolution. <laughs> And this is, Ginger, you can probably elaborate more, but we need a resolution that allows the mayor and the city clerk to sign off on the closing documents of Dr. Holmes' office. This just kind of finishes out the closing on it. Um, we did a title search and everything turned out okay on it. It's just the title company requires a, a resolution saying who actually gets to sign on behalf of the city to receive it, which seems like it'd be obviously the mayor and the clerk, but you actually have to have a resolution to do that each time. So that's what this is. It's just finishing up what we've pretty much already done with our prior motions to accept his offer. I'll take a motion to put resolution 2-3-2020 on the floor. So moved. Second. Motions made and seconded. Resolution number 2-3-2020, a resolution by the City of Lone Oak authorizing the mayor and city clerk to execute closing documents to sell property commonly referred to as Dr. Holmes' office. Whereas the, after a lengthy process of evaluation, marketing, and other attempts to sell the property, the city council solicited bids to sell the property commonly referred to as Dr. Holmes' office and more particularly described as follows. Lots 1 and 2, Block 7, Hicks and Reynolds survey to the town of Lone Oak, Lone Oak County, Arkansas. Whereas at the regular city council meeting on December 9, 2019, the, city, the council voted to accept the bid made by Lee and Kimberly Holmes for the sum of $10,000 and no $100. Whereas the city council believes this is a fair price for the property given its current condition and rehabilitation needs. Whereas the city council hereby authorizes the mayor and clerk to execute a deed and any other closing documents on behalf of the city of Lone Oak and to pay any reasonable closing costs assessed to the city from the proceeds of the sale. Now therefore be it resolved that the city council for the city of Lone Oak, Arkansas does hereby authorize the mayor and clerk to execute a deed and any other closing documents on behalf of the city of Lone Oak to sell the property for the sum of $10,000 and no $100. Any discussion on it? And we'll take it to a vote. All in favor to accept, say aye. 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 All opposed? That motion carries. All right, lastly, I'll take it a motion to approve the bills. So moved. Second. second. Motion is made and seconded. Any questions or concerns? All in favor, say aye. Aye. All opposed? All right, I got two uh, announcements for the public. There is a state of the city that's been recently uh, put out on social media, the city's social media website and the YouTube channel. Uh, so please, we put a lot of work into that. Mr. Holden Lane actually did a lot of work this year and last year to help us put that video together. And so I'm very proud of it. Um, so please check it out, share it, like it, and uh, get it out there so folks can know what's going on in the city. Um, and also, you guys remember we, we took a motion to uh, approve the uh, city council bench not going to be here next month probably going to be april before we have an opportunity to actually use it so just two more months and Re poor regina and bill blankenship myself won't be moving these tables and microphones around every city council so all right we're just past an hour so what i'm going to do uh, i know some folks showed up tonight to have a brief word with the city council so um i'm going to open up the floor real briefly miss gina wirdelick i know you had a you wanted to take an opportunity to, to say something yes Thanks to the City Council for allowing me the opportunity to speak. And I grew up here. I'm so excited for all the things that are happening. Jim, my husband, a.k.a. Grumpy, is <laughs> handing out the information I want everybody to see. And my dad, Daryl Cox, is also here to support our endeavor. We're part of uh, wanting to bring back downtown Lone Oak. And when you see on the piece of paper the business card, it's Tater Tot Enterprises, LLC. And for those of you that knew or did not know my mom, she never ate junk food. It was only country food. And if she slipped a little bit, she always had tater tots. So that's why I wanted to name the company Tater Tot Enterprises. And we purchased the building 
downtown between uh, Glover Insurance and Joya Antiques, and we're going to open a restaurant, and we want to call it the Grumpy Rabbit, and we want it to be a family restaurant. Uh, the vision that I have is having an aquarium in the restaurant with local fish and have coloring sheets for the kids to be able to mainly get educated on the fish that we have around town. And one reason is because last summer I took six kids with me to vacation Bible school and going six miles down the country road, none of them knew the difference between rice, soybeans, and corn. So by the time that we came back, they, they knew all about it. But <laughs> And we would like to offer uh, discounts for military and first responders. And with the restaurant being downstairs, the uh, upstairs would be hopefully an overflow and also use it for meetings for business people or school clubs or church organizations. And we hope to advertise via social media, website, and also Arkansas DOT signs out on the interstate and maybe billboards. And we have uh, Ron and his wife that are part of our team to help uh, keep us following all the rules on doing renovations and coming up with great ideas. And I would just like to ask for y'all to consider granting a private club membership license. And uh, also on the bottom of the sheet is a timeline that we hope to get on the agenda for the next uh, city council meeting March 9th. Thank you. Thank you, Gina. Thank you, Gina. I want to thank y'all for taking that building off out of our hands. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't hear you sorry. I want to thank y'all for taking that building out of our hands. <laughs> Ms. Rita, uh, I had a chance to speak with Ms. Rita this week, and she said if she had an opportunity, she wanted to come and address the city council. Ms. Rita, is your last name Adams? All right, thank you. And I live at 1215 Chestnut Street in the Privet Edition. I've lived there. My daughter is 41. I guess I've lived there 38 years. And um, the whole time I've lived there, I've never had a water <coughs> problem, never had any kind of rain to get in my house, but my house flooded. I got water in my house just recently. And I've had trouble with my commode. I cannot flush it. The day after you left and talked to me, I had the same problem again. The, all the water is holding under my foundation. I've got a foundation. My whole foundation of my house is falling. <coughs> my, and right now, the water, since you left and it rained, there's water all in the center, all back in the back again. And it's... It rains very much more. I'm gonna have the same problem. And I, five years ago, I was talking to one of the guys that worked for the city, and I told them about it, and they said they were working on it. And that was five years. That's five years done, went and come, okay? And not a thing has been done about it. Not one thing. And ah. Uh, hate to have to leave the house that I have lived in all these years. It, it, what happened is the houses of behind us, Privet's Edition, the big one they built up, they put all the dirt up on us. All the water comes back on us. I can name every house over there that's got foundation. My sister's got a big crack foundation. Every house is going. And the girl next to me, she living on concrete, pure concrete. Would you like to live on concrete? Would you like to get up in the middle of the night and 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 wave water in your where you want to go to your bathroom? I have, no. but I won't, don't want to do it again. So no, but that's what kind of conditions we're living in, and it's, and it's on your mind. And we're gonna have mold. There's mold sitting in them houses. <coughs> And the guy right next to me, it got in his. And the house down there, it got in it. It's washing all the foundations away from these houses. <coughs> in the length of time that they built them houses, it has been nothing but a mess. We've tried, <coughs> I mean, people talk to people, 
that it's all talk and no do. They want to fix everything else around here and put restaurants in and, and do all kinds of other things. That's all and nice and schools and do things. But we're the people living here. And if we got to live in that kind of condition, we're not going to live in it. We can't live in it. We, all I have done is lost value in my home. It is totally burnt. My back door won't even shut or lock halfway. And just the other day, the main man come out, the, the, one, of the, one of the workers, <coughs> and I didn't know how bad it had really had gotten. I walked back there with him, and guess what I did? I sunk down in mud like quicksand. He like to never got me out of the mud. <coughs> <coughs> That's why it's coming up under my commode and going in the floor. I'm and living on concrete in my bathroom. Can I and pass this around so everybody can see a picture? I live one block from her, and everybody can see what we're doing. It's, 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 it's a little I live across the street, and it's. Yeah. Our foundation, yeah. she's got a foundation on the side of her crack. Can't flush the toilet when it rains. <coughs> yeah, you can't flush the has bed. washed away our soil, okay? It's washed every bit of our soil away. There's a couple of them, but I am right on the corner of Plantation and Fairview. Yeah, it's hitting us all. It got even worse when they laid all the new... When they did the plumbing, my road isn't as bad as it was, but I have to clean out half the block because there's no neighbors there, and it builds up, so I, there's pine needles and stuff, and so I have to go down with the rake and stuff and drag it all out because I know their houses are lower. I'm on the corner. So it's not getting into my house. Now my fan foundation is cracked. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. the walls even in the house. It's gotten you know horrible cracked. because, and we're fixing to have a bigger rain. So even yes, though I, I, I tell you what I do. it's scary when you. I, I live in fear. Has it been that way a long time? My house time? is going yes. to flood, and it has steadily got worse. Last year it's, it's been getting bad. worse because yeah. the more rain we're having, as you can yeah. see, over the past five years, it's sad. It's, it's sad. Just it's really taking everything yeah. out. Well, ma'am, I can, I can identify with you. I live on Reynolds Street, and for the last, until this year, when I took dirt from the city and built up mine, my den used to have about 12 foot, well, about 12 inches of water in it. And I'm going to tell you what. And I, and I understand how you feel about, Yeah. you hate to hear the rain coming, because you know what's coming in your house. I know what's coming on. So I, I feel for you. Well, this affects... Uh, uh, all of us over there, and uh, it's just not made. We don't want to hurt someone else's people. property by bringing in dirt and building ours up, right. and then all the water goes there to all of them. And then they're what? Then they're dirt. Then I told they, you, they, they put dirt on the right away. side of my property, so they let the water go there at the beginning mm -hmm. of being there. I've been there forty years almost. Yeah. Right. My sister and I both have lived in that area, well, and you know what? It is a sad day that you have to live like this. I don't want to have to hurt somebody else's property. I don't either. Like they did to me. Right. That was done a long time ago. 39, 38 years. Miss Rita. Yeah. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. And uh, I, I want you to know that. I, I promise you, everybody up here, if we could go out tonight and we could, there was a short-term fix, we would do it. There's not. But I do want you to know, and I want you ladies to understand, too, it's, it's the one thing I think about every single day. There's a lot of things I think about. And there's a thousand piece puzzle and we each have one piece in our hand. But this is a very serious thing. It is. It is the biggest it is the issue biggest problem that we face right as a community. That's right. But it but will I, take they should have never allowed the city council did this. They should have never allowed them to build let Privet have his way and build dirt up on us and build houses up on us. And then it all come back on us and no no place for the water to go. No place for it to go. They didn't have a plan made out for for the drainage. No, it wasn't planned good a long, long time ago. It when was they never that. planned. Yeah. I've lived here all my life. I, and I hate to, you know what I'm planning on doing? I got somebody that wants to buy my house. She don't know who I am and I don't know who she is, but I'm selling mine. She flipped them. I'm selling it. I'm getting out because you know what? It's sad that I have to do that. But I have no choice. I have no choice but to lose value of my home. Right. Thank but you. I've worked all my life. Thank you for coming up here tonight. We spoke last week. I know it's not easy to get in front of the public. 
it's hard. And it's not hard for me tonight because you know what? Uh, like I just told you, the day before I spoke, I spoke to you. The next day I went to flush my commode. I had water <coughs> everywhere. Again. And I've got a bad back. i got a bad spine. Yes, ma'am. I have a dead husband that's in the grave. It just passed away. I have nobody to help me. No one. Not a soul. It's horrible. And I live in fear, and I shouldn't have to. I'm having anxiety attacks for <coughs> It's gotten so bad that I just pass out. So that's all I got to say. Something needs to be done. It needs to be done fast because it is it's horrible. I went to one looked at one little lady's house that worked for Walmart's. I can't think of her name. Her house looked like an earthquake had hit it. Her ceiling is cracked from there to there. Her whole back side of her house is just crumbling. The foundation, all of the brick is torn away. I feel sorry for that little lady. What's going to happen? The house is going to fall in on you, and you're going to die. You're going to get killed. Give, give yeah. So the city has to come out and have guns pumping. I believe they bought a new pump because the last time I had water so bad in my yeah, property. Yeah, when they pumped, they did help. I could hear the pump from down at the, her house, mm -hmm. which I think you have bought a new pump, <coughs> which drained the water eventually off, but if it's going on at night time and I'm starting to walk back while uh, my house gets this high, I can get to my house, it could flood me, and there's no one, I mean, they don't come out it at night. Flood, yes, the one it's, it's getting there. The dirt, there's no dirt. But they got, got a big crack all the way down, mm -hmm. sister. They are coming through, and they are checking everybody's properties who's for flooding, because I see the city truck. You can't get in the back of mine, because they'll go down, and they'll go down like quicksand. Well, um, ladies, I, I, I appreciate it. What we it. need to understand is when we say the city council did, didn't do anything, some of us weren't even born when those houses were built. So, it wasn't this council. So, 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 so we got we got to, uh, like you the mayor said. Yeah, now you got to take on there. You, you got to take, take on there. We didn't come into the city council. We didn't want to cause a problem. Yeah. We, but, we, but, we're but not I'm sure, but, I'm, but I'm, <laughs> I'm sure, I'm positively sure, and I have my confidence in the mayor and, and the city forces and everything. I'm positively sure that we will do we whatever whatever we know. can do. You know what I thought I told him? What the best place to do this place is <coughs> take bulldozers and bulldoze every house out of there. Miss Rita. Slap them down to the ground. Thank you. Really appreciate it. We're gonna wrap up that conversation. There's one more Bill gentleman in the in the back. Sir, so I'm going to open it up to you I, real I just, quick. I just want to say, and I'm quite sure that we're all aware of it, but the situation that she's talking about. Everybody's yeah. aware. Uh, uh, Everybody's aware of that. Yeah, okay, okay. the situation it. she's talking about, and I know we're all aware, is not going to get any better because of climate change. So whatever yeah. we're going to do or whatever can be done, it's not going to get any better. Mm -hmm. yeah, it, and, it, it, and it's an issue that, that's not just, yeah, not just unique to y'all either. There's other areas of the town mm -hmm. that has flooding It'd issues It would be nice if well. someone could come come tell me what to do, you know. And it's sad my neighbor is living on concrete. I mean, Miss Faye has had it five times up to her knees. Wow. If it had been me, I'd have been up at that five years of the light rain. And lightning, oh man, lightning goes on. We're almost at an hour and a half for the city council. Everybody who came out tonight, I want to tell you, I'm really proud of you. Everybody in the city council just take just take their time and walk around. I appreciate you guys coming out tonight. Is there anything from the council? Thank you, ma'am. I love sure done. Yeah. If, uh, if you guys came tonight, could you now please ensure that you home. sign the roster? Make sure your name's on it. Down. If there's not anything else from the public or from the council, sure, then I'll take a motion to adjourn. Motion so, is so, made and seconded. Any objections? <laughs> I mean, I know it's always been bad on Honda Highway. Yeah, but I had no idea. Make sure you sign in. No, it, it just helps me okay. keep up with okay. who's, that, that's fine. who's been here and that way I can put it in a minute. I want to tell you one thing.
Straight that I went to school with, she's been there as long as I've been there. You know what she's doing? She's leaving her house. She's moving out on Saturday. She can't take her house and she's so destroyed. It's all my sister. She is totally moving out of her house. Isn't that horrible? You know, it's going to matter when people start, all everybody starts filing foreclosure and it gets in front of a judge and it's all coming from Lone Oak. They're going to wonder why. They really are. And it's going to happen. People's going to do it. They're going to file it. They don't care. You know, everybody does it every day. I, I'm not going to file foreclosure because I got some money and I'm going to get up. I am getting out, but I'm trying to help my people. I'm not trying to just run off and leave my neighbors. I'm not. I'm not. A, I'm not that kind of person. I'm trying to get help for them because it's it's the best thing I can do. I already got a buyer, so when I get to get straightened out. Rain coming tonight. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Half inch tonight. Well, half inch boys gonna lose their heart. It's not. It's gonna hurt. Listen. We get an inch or two in about 15 hours. That's when we flood. Okay. You can talk to him about that. You've got to have the pumps. Listen to me. We've already discussed it. If the water ends up beginning rising, then you can probably expect to see the pumps. With no more rain than we're forecasting, it should be a problem. But but it's still. And I want you to know that we're looking at it. We're talking about it. It's still standing on that ground. It's got some more orphans of rain already. It's not sinking down. It's so it's so saturated in the center and by the front. Well, you walk through, it's full of water. Like